So many of you will be familiar with the Dinosaurs! exclamation mark magazine series that was released in the 1990s, but you might not be familiar with the associated series of posters that were also available in newsagents at the same time. Um, in several parts, I collected them up until part 12. They did continue after then. I've got no idea how many there were in the series in total, but I thought it might be fun for us to have a look at all of these posters. Okay, part one is Allosaurus, the Mega Allosaurus, poster plus dozens of facts about prehistoric life. So you've got the Allosaurus poster, which is full size, and I remember each poster has a smaller half size poster on the back. That's usually, if not always, a mammal. And uh, well, we'll find out if that's the case as we go through them. So if you open it up, it's, uh, at first it feels a little bit like the magazine with, is it dozens of facts? It's facts anyway, about the Allosaurus with some dino data here. Key facts about how to say the name and details about other animals that lived at the same time. Ornitholestes. I think that's significant as we'll find out in a moment. So the um, mammal in part one is the Thylacus smilus. And if we open this up to full size, where are we? There we are, a full size poster which is indeed the Allosaurus chasing two small theropods, which I think are the aforementioned Ornitholestes. Uh, I remember as well that the posters varied in quality. This one, not so good. It's a little bit outdated, even for the 90s. Um, but that gets us off to quite a good start. Here we are now with part two, which is Iguanodon. Incredible Iguanodon poster plus mammoth facts haha so it looks like the mammal today is a mammoth here we are, here are our facts dino data close-ups of the poster actually which is a nice way to go about illustrating some of the information depicted therein that is our mammoth mammothus half-size poster and if we open up the full-size poster Some pretty good artwork there, and it is the most yellow Cretaceous scene I've ever seen. But you've got Iguanodon in the middle, and one, two, three, four Deinonychus, I suppose, attacking the Iguanodon in a yellow desert. And no prehistoric scene would be complete without a volcano in the background. So yeah, that's another, that's a nice one. I have to apologise for the splodges in the corners. These are blue tack marks. I did actually use these posters. Part 3, Carithosaurus. The fabulous Carithosaurus poster plus prehistoric scavengers. There are facts. Highlighting some of the scenes in the poster. The mammal today is an Entelodon. And if we open it up full size, ah, we have a profile picture. Ah, okay, so I'm going to have to adjust the camera for this one. Bear with me. Okay, well, I forgot that some of the posters were in profile format, but that's no problem. So here we have a Carithosaurus taking its two little babies for a walk and disturbing a toothed bird in the process. This is create quite a striking piece, bright colours, really quite nicely painted and a good choice of dinosaur for part uh, three. So yeah, recommend. One other thing I just noticed about this poster, which is not true for the others, is at the very bottom corner you can see a signature, uh, Francis. So I don't know who Francis is, but maybe we can do a little bit of digging after the video and see if we can find out. Okay, part four is Euoplocephalus, bone-crushing Euoplocephalus poster, and a whale of a sea monster. So they're always having a bit of a play on words, a bit of fun. If we open it up, we can see some of the shots, some of the information. 
the mammal this time is Protocetus, a prehistoric whale. And the full size poster is that it's a stunning piece of artwork, really. This is, I always remember as a kid this being one of my favourites. So that's the Europlicephalus, and it is banging a T Rex on the head. Really quite good. Is there a signature? Can't see one. But that's a really evocative piece. Moving on. Part 5, Taurosaurus. Taurosaurus on the rampage, plus the gnawing giant. Gnawing, not boring. Um, I've been forgetting to show you what's on the back of these posters. Uh, on the very back is an advertisement for the dinosaurs exclamation mark magazine. So this poster was released at around the same time as issue 11, 12. So this was running concurrently alongside the magazine series. And it indicates also what the next poster is in the series. So that was always a temptation for me to await the next poster. Taurosaurus information. It isn't saying that there's literally dozens of facts this time. Um, Maybe it was false advertising. Uh, we open up the mammal poster. The half size poster is a Protohydrocurus. Protohydrocurus. Am I saying that correctly? I think so. And the full size poster is Taurosaurus. And it's really quite nice again. So a herd of Taurosaurus, presumably um, two adults and a baby, being cornered by a cliff face by some sort of large Tyrannosaur, which is also quite nicely painted. This one has a signature, Francis. So there's the same artist producing set different... This one also has a signature, Francis, so the same artist, is producing several different pieces for this series, but presumably not all. While I've spoiled the surprise for part six, that is Baryonyx, an amazing Baryonyx poster, plus the prehistoric unicorn. Um, OK. I won't, put, I won't show you what's on the back of the poster. Um, we'll leave it as a surprise what the next one might be. Uh, there is our series of facts. If we open up, this is a profile format for the half size mammal poster, a Lasmotherium. And if we open up the full size poster, it's another really fine piece of art. Uh, Baryonyx going fishing as it was wont to do. Um, nice waterfall in the background. I can't make out a signature. Part 7, Mamenchisaurus, uh, a towering Mamenchisaurus poster, plus the animal that was used as a house. Here are the facts, Mamenchisaurus facts. The Glyptodon is the mammal of choice for this poster, and it's another profile format poster, and it's a particularly atmospheric one of... A herd of Mamenchisaurus with some pretty aggressive looking purple skies in the background and some pterosaurs flying by. Really good, really nice. I remember, I remember these, this is bringing back a lot of memories from my childhood. I had my walls plastered with these posters. Well, it took us until part eight to get there, but we are finally on our T Rex poster, poster dedicated to the Tyrannosaurus. The terror of T-Rex, plus a beast with a forked horn on its nose. Yeah, these subtitles are not as, sla as snappy. Uh, here are our T-Rex facts. Synthetosaurus is the mammal of the day. And the full size poster is, again, a really nice piece of artwork showing a reptilian looking very green T-Rex chasing away a few dromaeosaurs from a kill 
uh, while a few other dromaeosaurs have snuck in in the background. We've got more volcanoes there in the horizon. As it wouldn't be the Cretaceous period if you didn't. And oh, another signature. West, 93. So that gives us a date when this was painted and it gives us a, a second artist. I think there might be more. So we've had Francis and West. There were probably others. But it's nice to be able to credit the appropriate people. Part 9 is the Pachycephalosaurus. Pachycephalosaurus butt out. Plus, there's a moose loose inside. <laughs> okay. Um, the facts. The mammal of the day. It's a Sibitherium. And the poster of the dinosaur is a couple of jousting pachycephalosauruses one headbutting the other off the edge of a cliff whilst a few presumably females watch on and in the, there's a little pterosaur flying by as well there is there is a signature Peter David Scott ah it must be the same Scott it's a different signature but the Scott looks Pretty sure that that Scott is the same. So, Peter David Scott is the artist of this one, and a few of the other ones. Very yellow scene again. I don't know what it is about the Cretaceous and yellow with this poster series. We're now in double digits. Part ten is Compsognathus. Compsognathus, a tiny dino with a big bite. Plus, meet monster jaws. Compsognathus facts. Where's Monster Jaws? That's Monster Jaws. Oh, this one's... What's going on? Oh, it's in several parts. Uh, this one's been damaged. So, let's see. Monster Jaws, where are you? He's been here. Here's Monster Jaws. Monster Jaws is Andrew Sarkis. Three of them pulling apart a carcass. <laughs> Andrew Sarkis pulling apart a carcass. Um, let's put the poster of the dinosaur together. Part one on the side. Two. Well, it's a shame that it's damaged. I think. I think this looks faded as well. I reckon. I reckon I might have taken this poster with me when I went to university, and that might explain why it's in such poor condition. It's been put up and down, up and down, from room to room. I've taped some of the damage, um, but yeah, it's uh, it's actually a really nice piece showing a, a flock of Compsognathus dancing around under a herd of sauropods, Camarasaurus possibly, something like that. Um, the Compsognathus are hunting insects, there's a little lizard running along down the bottom, and we have a signature West 93, so it's the same artist again. There's also a pterosaur flying along uh, between the herd of sauropods. So that's a really nice scene. And again, quite nicely painted. Part 11 is Spinosaurus. The spiny solar powered dinosaur plus a rodent with horns. Spinosaurus data. Epigorlus is the rodent with horns. They have been mammals, haven't they? Every single one. So, I don't know what child would pick the mammal over the dinosaur. Uh, certainly not me. And the poster of the Spinosaurus is... I don't know, not, it doesn't strike me as quite as good as the other ones. There's, there's a certain lack of realism. But it's a dynamic scene. It's yellow again, particularly noticeable, and it's a Spinosaurus chasing two Ornithomimids through a stream. A nice touch here is that the the part of the sail has been damaged and there's some leaves trapped between two of the neural spines. Interesting, I've never seen that depicted like that. No signature, uh, maybe the artist was embarrassed. Part 12, and this is the last part in my collection, although I know the series did continue beyond 12, is the Brachiosaurus, the gentle giant Brachiosaurus, 
plus a super sloth with mega claws. Here are our Brachiosaurus facts. The Megatherium is the half size mammal poster. And the dinosaur poster, which is ripping a little bit, is a Brachiosaurus, a pair of Brachiosaurus from a really interesting perspective. Um, yeah, that's a really nice poster. Stylistically, it looks like it could be the same as the Spinosaurus previously. Uh, but there are no signatures that I can see to say one way or another. And uh, Brachiosaurus is popping out some vapour from its nostrils. Uh, yeah, it's really quite interesting, a nice piece. And I think, if I remember correctly, that at this point I only had a small box room and my wall space was completely covered. And so I didn't get the next poster and I don't know how many more there would have been in the series. It's a shame because if we go to the back page of this poster it tells us what the poster would have been and it is a Carnotaurus, a Carnotaurus dragging away a what looks like a hadrosaur with the sun shining out from behind a cloud in the background. So yeah it's another really quite nice piece of art and Unfortunately, I don't have that one to look at it properly. And I don't know how many more posters there were in the series either. But uh, if anybody who's watching has those posters or knows what those posters were, or how many, were there, how many there were in the series, please do comment and let me know, because I'd love to find out. So I decided to follow up on the issue of who created all of this artwork. And in the fine print on the back of the magazines on the back of the posters it does give the picture credits for each of the dinosaurs so to quickly summarize um, there are five artists in total neil lloyd created posters one two four and six francis is a john francis and he created posters three five and seven there's an artist called chris west who produced posters eight ten and twelve Pete Scott produced number nine, I think that one was signed. And finally, Andy Peck and Robin Buttle produced poster 11. That was the Spinosaurus that we noticed looked a little bit different to the others. So, mystery solved. Okay, so there you go. A series of the dinosaurs exclamation mark posters that were released to coincide with the dinosaurs exclamation mark magazine in the 90s. Mm -hmm.